All right, in this video, we're going to talk about order of operations. These are the objectives. So we're going to start with PEMDAS. And you might see PEMDAS written in different ways. I've seen it written as GEMDAS with a G. Uh, I've seen it written uh, with a B, BEMDAS. The, the, the only thing that changes is that first letter. All right, so for my purposes, I'm going to use PEMDAS. And I'm going to uh, call P parentheses. All right. So parentheses can include not only the parentheses, but also the brackets that are on the outside. You can see here on the screen. We always complete parentheses first. Always. Okay, that's the reason why we would introduce some grammatical punctuation in a math problem. Okay, we really want to be able to see that first step. So you might see parentheses or bracket. E stands for exponents. You can see I gave the four a little exponent, a little two up above him. Now, this, is, this video is designed for fifth graders. This is not a fifth grade skill, at least in the state of Texas. So, we're, we don't have to do any problems with exponents, but it's still important that we know that E comes after P. All right, so exponents will come after the parentheses. M is multiplication. You can see very important, which I'll talk about more. You will solve multiplication problems left to right with division. With division. All right, so multiplication and division are equal to each other. They just have to be written down in some order, and whoever came up with PEMDAS decided to write them like this. D is for division, again, left to right with multiplication because they're equal. A for addition, I'll notice this. Addition is also solved left to right with subtraction, and S is for subtraction, solving left to right with addition. This will make more sense. The left to right will make more sense as we get into some examples. But I think right off the bat, if we can remember PEMDAS, that's going to help you so much with order of operations. So let's write it a different way. So let's write it a different way. PEMDAS. But with the P, I put parentheses to help me remember that's what it means. The E, I put a little exponent above it. The M and the D, I've grouped together. And I've drawn an arrow that goes from left to right. Very important. And I've grouped the A and the S together. Again, drew an arrow left to right. All right, let's solve a problem. I've put the symbols off to the side to, to help us so that we know what we need to do. I hope that you, when you look at this expression, something really stands out to you. All right? I hope the parentheses stand out to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to underline 10 minus 7 because they are surrounded by parentheses. Now, I'm not doing that just for this video. I do that in class. All right? I do that on my paper. I ask my students to do it. Uh, it's important for the next step, and I'm going to tell you what that is here in just a second. But let's do 10 minus 7. That gives me 3. Now, I just write that below the line. I don't put equal signs anywhere. I just put it right below the line. 10 minus 7 is 3. Now, the line tells me what I have already done, so I won't use the 10 and the 7 ever again. But more importantly, it tells me what to bring down. So I'm going to bring everything else down that's not underlined. This is important. All right, This is important for the rest of your math career, especially when you get into algebra and tougher uh, maths, because you want to stay organized. And bringing all these other numbers down will help you stay organized. So this becomes a brand new problem. 4 minus 3 plus 5 times 2. We don't care what's on the first line anymore. It's a brand new problem. All right. So we're finished with parentheses. We won't have exponents. So that means that we're on to multiplication and division. So I see a subtraction sign. I see an addition sign. And I see a multiplication sign. So even though it's a way over here on the far right, we don't care. It's the only multiplication or division step in this whole problem now. So we have to do that next. We have to go in the order. So 5 times 2 is 10. Again, we just put that below it. We don't put it off to the side. Most important step, we bring everything else down. 
So now we have a brand new problem. 4 minus 3 plus 10. Now our tendency tends to be, hey, let's just add first, because adding is easy, right? I don't have to do that subtraction stuff. Let's just add. But let's remember, adding and subtracting are equal, and we go left to right. That means whoever's on the left-hand side will be done first. So when I look at my expression, 4 minus 3 plus 10, I have to do the operation that's on the left subtraction is on the left hand side of the problem so that's what I'm going to do next so 4 minus 3 is 1 I will bring everything else down which is just plus 10 now I have my fourth step of this whole problem it's the only thing that's there it's 1 plus 10 that gives me 11 and the problem is solved. All right, we did that in four steps, but more importantly, we stay organized as we work down the paper. Another problem. Let's see if we can't speed it up maybe, all right? So let's look for parentheses. Any parentheses? No, all right. Any exponents? Not in the fifth grade. So let's go to multiplication and division. Do you see any multiplication and division? Sure. We see a division sign, we see a multiplication sign. So what are we going to do first? Well, I like to do multiplication, so I'm going to do that first. Well, no, no. Multiplication and division are equal. So we have to do the one that's on the left first. So since division is on the left-hand side of the problem, we're going to do that first. 48 divided by 2, if you have to go off to the side to solve that, you certainly could. If you needed to count by 2s, you certainly could. But the answer is 24. Again, I'm going to put that under the line. I'm not going to write an equal sign anywhere on my paper. Most important step, bring everything else down. Now, we're still on multiplication and division right now because we did not do the multiplication step. Well, now multiplication is just sitting right between a subtraction and an addition sign. Multiplication is going to win every time because he's the third step, multiplication and division. So I'm going to do 5 times 4 next. That gives me 20. Important step, bring everything else down. Brand new problem, 24 minus 20 plus 6. All right, now we're ready to go down to addition and subtraction. Left to right, left to right. Who's on the left-hand side, the subtraction or the addition? Subtraction is on the left-hand side. So we have to do 24 minus 20 first and we get 4. Bring everything else down. Notice that plus 6, he went for a ride, the whole problem. We haven't done anything with him until now. Last step, 4 plus 6, 10. All finished. If we do these in different orders, if we had decided that we wanted to multiply before dividing or adding before we subtracted, we would have gotten different answers. We wouldn't have all gotten the answer 10. So mathematicians long ago decided, hey, we have to do everything in the same order so that we all get the same answer. So 10 is our answer. Let's remember, with multiplying and dividing, you do the steps left to right. And with addition and subtraction, you do them left to right. All right, so you'll do all of your multiplication and division first, left to right, and then you'll do your addition and subtraction left to right.